Hallelujah. I'm just trying to, to get signal to be prompted whether to start or not. Yeah, okay. Amen. Hallelujah. You're welcome to church this morning. It's a beautiful day. Do you agree with me? Yeah, it's a beautiful day. It is the day the Lord has made. Yeah, we have every reason to rejoice in it. So tell someone it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's the day of the Lord. Can we please rise up this morning as we get this service started in the name of the Father? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give glory and praise to the name of the Lord. You're welcome once again to church this morning. It's always a delight, always a delight to gather together, to fellowship in the name of the Lord. And if you're watching from home, you're welcome this morning. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands to heaven this morning and give praise to God? Let's just appreciate him for another opportunity, another gift of life, another opportunity to be alive and to be in the gathering of believers, in the gathering of believers, blessing the name and lifting up his name on high. Can we lift our voices this morning and just say, Lord, we worship you in this place. We honor you in this place. We honor you in this place. We magnify you in this place. We give you praise because you're a good God. We worship and we honor you. Let someone lift their voice this morning and just sing praises to God. Sing his praises, sing his praises, sing his praises. Sing his praises. Don't wait for the choir. Just sing his praises. How he comes to you this morning. Lift your voice and sing his praises. Glorify the name of the Lord. He delights in your worship. He delights in your praises. Go ahead and bless him. Give him all the praise. Give him all the worship. He's worthy to be praised and to be adored. He's worthy to be lifted up on high. He's worthy. He's worthy to be magnified. Our God is so good. Our God is so kind. Our God is so loving, so merciful, so gracious, so faithful. In all his ways, he's perfect. Can someone give God praise in the house this morning? Our God is loving. Thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name. Thank you, Lord, for sparing us today. Thank you for sparing our lives. Thank you, Lord, because without you, we will not be where we are. Lord, we thank you. Let someone lift their voices and appreciate God truly and genuinely from the bottom of your heart. Let him know that you are thankful. Let him know that you are grateful for anything that he may have done for you. Give him praise. Give him worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The shepherd of our soul, we say thank you. The owner of our lives, we say thank you. The king of glory, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is yet to come. We have come this morning to honor you. We have come to bless your name. We have come to worship you. We have come to glorify you. Yes, Lord, you are good. And your loving kindness endures forever. Yes, Lord, you are good. And your mercies endure forever. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. Go ahead and pour out your praise to him. Go ahead and pour out your praise to him. Go ahead and pour out your praise to him. It's worthy to be worshipped. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord. We honor you today. We praise you today. You are the reason we are here today. Shanda Yarabosataya, King of Glory, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for delivering us. If there's nothing that you're thankful for this morning, thank God for the gift of salvation. Thank God for the gift of eternal life. Thank God for the gift of His grace and His mercy. His grace that found us when we were lost in the world. Give Him praise this morning. Hallelujah, we worship your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We lift our voices to you, Lord. We've come to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You know that song? I'm just going to try and sing it if the choir can help me. It says, I've come to say how much. I love you I've come to say how much I adore you I adore you 
I'm not here to complain. I'm not here to complain about my many problems. But by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you solve them. I'm here to say, I'm here. with it quickly and then we'll open the service hallelujah psalms chapter 20 from verse 1 to 5 psalms chapter 20 verse 1 to 5 hallelujah thank you jesus name hakuro shanta bazaria mali prakatoskaya psalm chapter 20 verse 1 to 5 if you're there we can read together it says may the lord answer you in the day of trouble it says amen someone May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. I want someone to just lift their voices this morning. This is a promise from God. He says he's able to fulfill our petitions. Can someone just lift their voices? If you have any petition, if you have anything in your heart this morning, this is the time. Just pour it out to him and just say, Lord, this is it. Thank you for your promise. Thank you because you're able to fulfill all that comes from my heart to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, because of this promise today I've come to bring my petition to you I've come to bring a request to you I don't know what your request might be but I want you to pour it out to him this morning and just let him know that Lord I know you're able to answer me Lord I know you're able to answer me I know you're able to do it for me every petition in this room this morning thank you Lord because you're able to answer thank you Jesus because you are a prayer answering God. Lord your word says you are the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above more 
much more that we are able to ask a request from you. Thank you, Lord, because in Thanksgiving, we receive our petitions this morning. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Pray like someone who has faith in God this morning. Pray like someone who has faith in God. Pray like someone who believes that he's able to do. It's the, word, the word of God says, blessed is she that believes that there will be a performance of that which has been said to her. Blessed is she who believes that there is going to be a performance of that which has been said to him or her. Pray this morning like someone who has faith in their heart. Oh, kanemo sataba. The Lord is here this morning. He's able to grant all your petitions. He's able to grant all your petitions. He's able to fulfill your heart desires in the name of Jesus. He's able to meet your needs. He's able to meet your needs. He's able to fulfill your petitions. Go ahead and ask of him this morning. Ask of him. Ask of him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Manli prakatose de boshkeya. Mali praka dese kete kete ye lentos kalibrado shende de de he kado satana na 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 le praka to sataya e rakado shanabaya e keto sataya we have come to the place of asking and we know that the Lord that has promised is able to fulfill. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, we've come to worship you this morning. We have not come to complain about any problems. We've come to pour our hearts to you. We've come to tell you how much we love you. We have come to serve you. We have come to worship you in this sanctuary this morning. We have come so that you can speak to us. We have come so that you can meet our needs. We have come so that you can answer the questions in our heart. We have come so you can guide us. We have come so you can lead and instruct us. We have come so that we can know you more. Lord, reveal yourself to us in this place today. Reveal yourself to us in this place today. Reveal yourself to us in this place today. Let the name of Jesus Christ be glorified now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can you tell your neighbor you're looking dashing today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. There is none like you, O God. You are the reason we live. You are the reason we move and the reason we have our being. Ledo shaka paso talabaha. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. Kalabo shatalabaha. Oh. You are the reason I live. You're the one. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. Can you help me say, You are the reason. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. You are the reason I live. You are the reason I live. You are the reason I live. You are the one for me. You are the one for me. So why should I fear when I have you? Surrounded by your love, your everlasting love. So why should I care what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know 
what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. And why should I fear? I'm surrounded by your love. His love is everlasting. And why should I care? They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know how far you went for me. They don't know what you've brought me to. They don't know where you went for me. <laughs> they don't know how far you love will reach. Hey, Gabasa, they don't know what you meant to me. They don't know what you meant to me. To me, so you split the sea. You split the sea so I can work right through. My fears will drown in perfect love. You rescued me, say, you rescued me so I can stand and sing. I am. Yes, I am a child of God. Oh, you split the sea, you split the sea. me say and now I can stand I am a child of God yes I am a child of God a child of God say I am a child. I am a child of God. Love. Yes, I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I have a father, he will never, never fail. I have a father, he will never, never fail. Jesus is my father, he will never, never fail. Rock of ages, never, never fail. I have...
Who is your father? I have a father. He will never ever fail me. I have a father. He will never, never fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never ever fail me. Rock of ages. Never ever fail. I have a father. He will never, never fail. Jesus. I have a father, he will never ever fail. I have a father, he will never ever fail. Jesus is my daddy, he will never ever fail. Rock of ages, never, never ever fail. Daddy, he will never ever fail. I have a daddy, he will never ever fail. Jesus is my father, he will never ever fail. Rock of ages, never, never ever fail. Rock of ages, never, never ever fail. Jesus is my father, he will never ever fail. Rock of ages, never, never ever fail. Rock of ages, never, never ever Your dance, hallelujah. Mekataya Labaha. Jesus, Jesus, I press your name. Jesus, Jesus, in sweet my pleasure that I bless your name, Jesus. 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 Jehovah, 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 Who 
people say. You are bigger than what people say. Say. You are bigger than what people say. You are big. You are bigger than what people say. You are. You are bigger. You are bigger than what people say. You are bigger than what you are bigger. You are bigger than what people say, Jesus. You are bigger than what people say, my God. You are bigger than what they call you, my God. You are bigger than what people say. You are bigger than what people say, Jesus. Say, my eyes have seen what we made me to say thank you, Lord. My eyes have seen what we made me to say thank you, Lord. My eyes have seen what we made me to say thank you, Lord. What will make me to say thank you, Lord? My hands are what will make me to say thank you, Lord? My hands have felt what will make me to say thank you, Lord? My hands have felt what will make me to say thank you, Lord? I will say. I will say thank you, Lord. I will say thank you, Lord. That's why we will say thank you, Lord. I will say thank you, Lord. My house will say thank you, Lord. I will say thank you, Lord. I will say thank you, Lord. One more time. We will say thank you, Lord. We will say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Me koto saka bara bo shata la baha. Le koso to la brako soto. Lo kara do shata ya la baha. Oso koto shata ya. My koto satire that I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence come my help. My help come from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. He says he will not suffer my food, my food to be moved. The Lord that keepeth me, he does not slumber. He will not slumber nor sleep. Say, for the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is thy shed upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun 
shall not smite me by day, nor the moon. He will preserve my soul, my shatter, even forevermore, even forevermore. Oh, my help. Oh, shaka paya la baha. My help. Say, my help. All of my help. All of my help. Come, my kotosha. My co. My help. My help. Who does your help come from? My help. Reketos. My help, Kalaro Shekete. All of my help. Come one more time. My Lego Satayala. Oh, my help. Reketos. My help. My help. My help. Reketos Sata. All of my help. Come and from the Lord, for you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you, and unto you, lift your hands and say this. We lift our hands and pray. You're the Lamb, you're the Lamb upon the throne. For you are glorious, say, for you are and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you, God, we lift our voice. You are the Lamb upon the throne. Lord, we thank you. We ask that the entrance of your word will give light and understanding unto us this morning. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Good morning, church. Thank you very much, choir. God bless you. Thank you. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Isn't it a little bit warm in here? It's a little bit warm, isn't it? Yeah. If we can turn off some part of the part of the heater. Okay. Praise God. Are you glad to be in God's house this morning? I can't hear you. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Yes. All right, cool. How is the fasting going? Have you been fasting? All right. Have you been enjoying it? If you haven't been fasting, say praise God. <laughs> there are so many sinners in this house. <laughs> All right, that's just a joke. Okay, praise God. All right. Uh, if, you know, I, I want to encourage us to try. If you haven't been fasting, just try. Even if it's till 12 noon, okay? 12, 3, or 6 p.m., you can just try. And then if you haven't been joining the prayers, what have you been doing? Please help me ask somebody sitting next to you. Have you been joining the prayers? What's the response? 
have not been joining. Okay, so make sure you join, okay? In the morning at 6 and in the evening at 5.45. Okay, say I will join the prayers. I can't hear you. Say I will join the prayers. I can't hear you. Say I will join the prayers. Okay, now you know the consequence, what the consequence will be if you don't join the prayers. Hellfire straight. <laughs> oh, praise God. All right, let's, let's, let's look into God's word this morning. Praise God. We've been speaking about the integrity of God's word. Praise God. We've been speaking about the integrity of God's word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please come back on the on the instrument for me. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne, and unto you. worship you. We adore you, Jesus. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised.
Father, we give you praise. manifest presence in this place this morning oh thank you for making the way thank you for the way thank you for the doors that you've opened unto your children this morning doors of opportunities and breakthroughs lord we give you praise we adore you lord jesus thank you father in jesus name we have worshiped amen amen praise god please be seated thank you Thank you. Thank you very much. Praise God. John chapter 8, please, and verse 12. John chapter 8. This feels a little bit too loud. But seems a bit too loud. Thank you. John chapter 8 and verse 12. John chapter 8 and verse 12. It's good to be back in church, isn't it? Yeah. Don't you just love Jesus? You know, we love Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, just one or two announcements for us. Please, we did put, um, uh, what's the word now? Uh, a, a data garden information on the church group. The questionnaire is sort of small. Please, can you fill it if you haven't filled it? We, we need the data um, as soon as possible, please. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. John chapter 8 and verse 12. Let's take into God's word this morning. It says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And last week we looked at, you know, the phrase that says, he who follows me, we explored or explained what it means to follow Jesus. This morning we're just going to take it a little bit forward. And um, I've tied to this the integrity of God's word. And like I said, that's where I'm hoping to get to next week, Sunday. But before then, I'm just trying to show us why it is important to, to study the Word of God and have a very good understanding of God's Word. A very, very, very good understanding of God's Word. Jesus, you know, by way of reminder, said to us in Matthew chapter 10 that he who loves Father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. What Jesus is simply saying is that you should give me preference over everything in your life. 
Yeah, I should be number one. Thou shalt have no other gods besides me. It should be number one in everything you do. It doesn't mean you should abandon your family. Praise God. Don't go to the extreme. Okay, it's, that, that's not what the scripture is saying. But this morning, Psalms 119 verse 105 tells us that your word is a lamp unto my feet, feet and a light to my path. Now, if we merge that scripture, just compare that scripture with John chapter 8 and verse 12, where Jesus was saying that he that follows after me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we, by extension, we can add it to John chapter 1, where the Bible described Jesus as being the word of God. It says, in the beginning was the word, isn't it? And the word was God, and the word, no, no, in the beginning was the word. The word was what? The word was with God, and the word was what? The word was God. And if you go further down, you will know that that verse 3, 4, and 5 was simply talking about Jesus. And so Jesus is the word of God and is still the light of God. That's what I'm trying to pass across to us. And so if you follow Jesus, it simply means you follow the word. Isn't that what we defined last week? Yeah. And in following the word, you will have the light of life. Yeah. You will not walk in darkness, but you will have what? The light of life. Now in John chapter 8 and verse 12, let's read John chapter 8 and verse 12 here. Actually, I want John chapter 1, please. John chapter 1. Let's read from verse 6 to 9. John chapter 1 and verse 6 to 9. You know, let's look at something from the John chapter 1 and verse 6 to 9. Please follow me carefully this morning, okay? John chapter 1 and verse 6 to 9. I'd like us to read together. John chapter 1 and verse 6 to 9. All right, let's read together. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to do what? To bear witness to, of that light. Look at verse, verse 9. Okay, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. So we can see here clearly that John wasn't the light, but Jesus is the light. And Jesus is the true light that gives light to every man coming into where? Into this world. And so if you follow Jesus, you know that you're following the true light. Yeah? And that in following that light, you are guaranteed to not walk in darkness, to not be in darkness, to not be under the control of darkness. Isn't that, isn't that clear from scripture? All right. So, Paul tells Timothy that it is the will of God that every man be saved. Yeah, God wants every man to be saved, okay? And not just be saved, to also come to the knowledge of the truth. So, it is God's will that every man must be what? Must be saved. And then, after being saved, the next thing that should happen is that you must come to the knowledge of the truth, okay? And we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Is it life or light now? Uh, all right, praise God. Now, the point I want to, to, to say to us is that in coming to the knowledge of the truth is coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, you get saved, you come to the knowledge of the truth, the truth there is more or less coming to the knowledge of who Jesus has truly made us. Are you following me this morning? All right. Okay, so let's take it a little step forward. John chapter, Colossians chapter 1. No, no, yeah, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. So we know Paul tells us from the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 that he upholds all things by the word of his power. And in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, what I'm trying to point across to us again this morning is that everything revolves around Jesus. Yeah? Everything that pertains to us revolves around Jesus. For it pleased the Father that in him, in Jesus, should dwell the fullness of the Godhead 
bodily. And so in Jesus is everything that pertains to life and godliness. In everything that pertains to the Godhead, everything revolves around Jesus. That was why Paul tells us in Hebrews that he upholds all things by the word of his power. The word of God revolves around Jesus. Are you, are you getting the picture this morning? All right. Now, so if I'm to follow Jesus and not walk in darkness and have light, it then means that it is really important for me as a Christian to understand the word of God. Yeah? To work effectively or to follow Jesus effectively, I must have a very good understanding of God's word because everything about God is written in his word. Yeah? Yeah? Everything that God wants us to know about him, let me not say everything about God. Everything that God wants us to know, this side of eternity, is written in the word. And so if I have a very good understanding of God's word, I will not walk in darkness, but I will walk in the light because the word is the light. Yeah? The word is the light. Good. Now, from my little experience or in following or being in church, and I'm looking and observing carefully the, the church, I have come to understand that a lot of people come to church, but many people don't actually understand God's word. And so I, I, I love to point people to God's word a lot. I like to explain you know, to people, and I do this at the beginning of every year, try to explain to us how to study God's word. And I hope that we've been practicing. I, I know some of us have been doing it. But if you're just joining us, I'd like to just do a very quick guide on how to study God's word so that you can practice it on your own. Praise God. All right. We know that the Bible is divided into two parts, right? The Old Testament and the New Testament. Yeah? Two parts. The Old Testament and what? And the New Testament. Right. Now, the Old Testament consists of books written by several authors, right? This is just a quick one, five minutes. I, I'm sure if you go on YouTube and search our page, you will, I think I must have done a series on how to study God's Word sometimes last year or two years ago extensively. So if you go on the YouTube page, it may be there, okay? But this is just a five-minute rough guide, okay? Now, I'd like you to know, I'm sure some of us have heard it before from um, here or from somewhere else, that the Old Testament part of the Bible ended when Jesus died on the cross. Right? The Old Testament part of the Bible ended where? When Jesus died on the cross. Hebrews chapter 9, verse what now? I think I have it in my notes. Verse 16, to about 21, tells us that without the death of a testator, a testament cannot come into force, isn't it? So, for example, when my father died, okay, he had a will that he locked up somewhere in his wardrobe and somewhere with his lawyer and the high court. Now, as long as he lived, that will is irrelevant. Even if I steal it, for example, and, and take it and go away with it, and I see my inheritance there, and I want to lay claim to it, it's invalid, isn't it? Because he is still alive, he can even change his mind and say, because you've stolen this will, I don't want to give you this, this, and this, right? But the moment he passed on, nobody can change that will anymore, right? I get maybe a superior court for in exceptional circumstances, right? If they feel that the man was not in his right frame of mind. But I, under normal circumstances, that will cannot be changed, right? So, the will of God for us Okay, which is written in the epistles started when Jesus died on the cross. Okay, so I'm saying that the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the latter part of that book is still part of the Old Testament. Do you get the picture? When you're studying your Bible, you must know that. Okay, that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, up to the point that Jesus died, were all part of the Old Testament. That is the number one point I like to to point out. I don't have time this morning to, to explain everything. That's just a guide. Now, the act of apostle is, uh, 
is, is, is like a startup guide as to the beginning or the beginning of the church, yeah? When the church was about to start after the apostles, gives us like a historical account of that book or, or the beginning of the church, yeah? Is that clear as well? All right. Now, the story of the church, the substance that belongs to us, the church, you will find it from Romans to Jude. So if you really want to understand who you are in Christ, you're better off staying with what was written to you, the epistles, Romans to where? To Jude. Am I describing the Old Testament? No, whatsoever things were written are for, they were written for us to learn from them. There is a way, which I will show us in a moment, there is a way to interpret the Old Testament. I will show us how Jesus did it in a moment. And then Revelation is a futuristic book, okay, that you have to understand the epistles properly. If not, you'll be seeing visions and dreams that you don't understand. But I tell you, the Re book of Revelation is about one of the easiest books to read when you understand the epistles. Okay? With that broad overview, with little overview, now, not the broad, that's not broad, just a, a small overview. <laughs> okay. I need you also to learn to pay attention to tenses in the Bible. English is very important. What did I say? It's interesting that outside of church, we pay attention to tenses, but in the church, we sort of mix past, present, and future tense. We just merge everything together. Why? When a scripture uses past tense, what does past tense mean? It means it's already done. The future tense means it's going to be done. Present tense means what is a present reality, or let's say present continuous tense as we see in scripture. Is that important as well? Yeah, I should give us an example that will cover everything. You must also know that there are certain people in the Bible that will refer to them as prophets. Give me an example of a prophet in the Bible, Old Testament. Jeremiah. Isaiah. Do you love Jeremiah, the fire prophet and the weeping prophet? Yeah, do you love Elijah? About call down fire. I called you. If you offend me now, I call fire on you, burn you into pieces. Okay, praise God. That's a joke. All right? Okay? But you, you must understand there are prophets in the Bible. And when they were, what do prophets do? When they speak, they tell us about things that will happen in the future, isn't it? So when you read the prophets, you must understand that they were prophesying about the future that is to come. That future, God fulfilled in Christ. So, those prophecies that they were speaking about became fulfilled in who? Christ. So, which is why when you read those prophecies in the New Testament, in the epistles, you will see them written in past tense because they are now fulfilled in Christ. Did you get the picture? All right, let's look at an example, a very popular one. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. You will love this one. Obadiah, let's read together. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. Don't, just follow me carefully this morning. I trust I would have time and God will give me speed and then, you know, we'll, we'll land at the safe point. Obadiah, please. Verse 1, chapter 1, verse 17. So let's read this. It says, but upon Mount Zion. So if, you, if you're a student of the Bible, you know that Obadiah is a prophet or was a prophet when he lived, right? And what was he doing? He was prophesying. Okay, so, but upon but on Mount Zion, there shall be what? The word there is what? Future, what tense is that? Future tense, right? There shall be what? Deliverance. Okay, what is deliverance? What is deliverance? You know now, don't, don't you know, you're casting out a demon from someone. Give me the church language, right? Yeah? <laughs> and there shall be what? Holiness. And the house of Jacob shall do what? Shall possess. Have you, have you prayed this prayer point before? All right. Uh, oh, you, you haven't been around a few churches. I have been around a few. I've been around a few. Okay, look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Verse 18. Look at the next verse. It says, and the house of Jacob shall be what? 
shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. But the house of Esau shall be what? Stubble. They shall kindle them and devour them, and no survivor shall remain of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. So let's go back to verse 17. Verse 17. You know, if you've been around church, you will notice that almost all the deliverance ministries in the body of Christ is built around this verse of the scripture. Go to verse 17, right? Almost all the deliverance ministries. But of Mount Zion, there shall be what? Deliverance. Of course, there will be deliverance. Okay? There will be. Obadiah was prophesying about what God's plan was going to be. Speaking about a future that is going to happen. Now, let's read Luke chapter 24, please. Luke chapter 24 and verse 25 to 27. We're coming back to Obadiah in a moment. Luke chapter 24. Let's see how Jesus explained the scripture. Please, can we turn up this, this, this one, please? It's, it's doing something to my head. So, do you know the exact switch for this one? Yeah, please. Thank you. All right. Luke chapter 24, please. Read Luke chapter 24 with me, verse 25 to 27. Luke chapter 24. Then he said to them, read with me, please. He says, O foolish one and slow of heart to believe in all the prophets have spoken. So it's good to believe everything the prophets have spoken. There's just a way to understand what the prophets have spoken about. Look at the next verse, verse 26. It says, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Now, if, you, if you're not familiar with this story, Jesus was explaining to certain disciples who didn't understand what was going on. You only need to read the verses before. So look at verse 27. Read for me, please. I can't hear you. And beginning... So, what Jesus did for these guys, the word Moses there, what does it stand for? No, 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 no. Moses, what does it stand for? Genesis to where? Genesis to Deuteronomy. Okay, so if we see, it says in the beginning, Moses refers to the five books that Moses wrote. Okay, give me back that scripture, please. It says, and beginning at Moses, Genesis to Deuteronomy, and all the prophets, all the messages written by the prophets, what did Jesus do? Read for me. He says he expounded to them in what? So it means that from Genesis to all the prophets, what did Jesus bring out? The things concerning who? So when you read the Old Testament, if you don't come up with what Jesus did here, you're reading it wrongly. Can I say that again? In your study of the Old Testament, any book of the Old Testament that you read or study, if you don't bring out Jesus from the scriptures, you're reading with Paul, what Paul called a veiled mind. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 3. Let's, let's look quickly. Second Corinthians chapter 3. You're reading it with a veiled mind. I wish I had time to, to, to do this this morning. Because I can see some of us who are looking a little bit lost. Yeah? Now, there is a systematic way to study the Bible. Okay? There is a system to studying the Bible. When you understand the system, it will be so easy for you to understand and follow the Bible. It's a story that began with Genesis, ended with Revelation, but everything revolves around Jesus. Jesus is the center point. Now, give me 2 Corinthians, please. Chapter 3 and verse 17, 15 to 17 or 18, that about 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Where, you, where Paul was talking about veil. Okay, if you, if you don't have it, you can take it home for reference. But let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12, please. Hebrews chapter 12. And we'll come back to Obadiah 1.17. Remember, Obadiah said, but upon Mount Zion, I, I'm so used to that scripture in the King James. King James says upon but the New King James says on, okay? But upon Mount Zion, there shall be what? Deliverance. Now, the word deliverance simply means to set free, okay? It means to set free. That's, that's what it means, okay? But look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22, please. 
So Obadiah gave us a picture of those who are coming to Zion. They will come there, and when they get to Zion, they will be delivered. Okay? But look at Hebrews chapter 12, please. Can we do a bit quick out with the scriptures? It says, but you have come to where? So you're not going to Zion. Where are you? We are there. What is in Zion? What's in Zion? Zion is describing Zion to us as what? The city of the living God. The what? The heavenly Jerusalem. To and what? An innumerable company of what? Angels. Look at verse 28. Look at verse 28. The next verse, sorry, next verse, 23. 23, next verse. To where? To the general assembly and where? The church of the firstborn who are where? Registered in heaven. Think for a moment. Can there be deliverance in heaven? Think for a moment. Would there be deliverance in heaven? Okay. To God, the judge of all, to the spirit of just men made perfect. So we're in Zion. Now go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Colossians 1 verse 12. So I'm saying to you this morning that as you are seated here as a believer, you are in Zion. Yes, sir. I didn't say it. The Bible says so. Yes, it's not my word. We just read it. Yes, yeah? I didn't say it. Yeah? Even if I say otherwise, stick to what the Bible says. It says you are where? In Zion. Now, before you got to Zion, this is what Jesus did. He says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be part of Zion, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Look at verse 13. What did he do? What did he do? The word delivered, past or present. Past or present. Are you under any bondage? What did Jesus do? From what? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Paul described the rulers of darkness in high places. But what did Jesus do to those rulers? The Bible tells us, tells us that he, he spoils principalities and powers. He stripped them of their power. He made a public show of them. And then he delivered us. And translated us, where? To the rulership of his kingdom. So, you must understand tenses in scripture. Even when your head does not agree with it. Let your spirit guide you and say, I have been delivered. It's not about how you feel. I know that our feelings sometimes can... You, see, you can have a bad dream and the devil can tell you you are under, you are, you are possessed. It's not about how you feel. It's not about the dream. It's about what the scripture says. It's, it's what the scripture says. It's what the scripture says. And it's, it's the scripture says that I have been delivered. So that's my reality. I can never be under any bondage. Never. It says he has delivered past tense. That means it's already done. Don't get so used to the action films in the Old Testament. I know there are so many movies, American movies in there. Don't get so used to it. Yeah? Fix your eyes and your gaze on the epistles. It says you have been delivered. That means I am delivered. I'm free. Second Corinthians. I'd like us to read this, please. Second Corinthians. See, the word delivered used there means to completely set free. See, this simple explanation can put an end to all the deliverance ministries in the body of Christ. To all of, if, if we simply understand that, but you know what, it's a gospel that thrives in Africa. It thrives. It's, it's easier. It thrives. It's easier. You, you think it's easier to be telling you of what I'm telling you. If I'm in Africa and I want to come, ah, come now, the God of Elijah send down fire. Hey, God of Elijah sent down fire. Come, there is fire on this mountain. And burn all the demons. But you see, there is bigger freedom. When you teach people the truth, 
there is a bigger freedom. If the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. There is a, there is a higher realm to, to live and to teach people by. And we live in that liberty. See, we live in the reality of that liberty. Of who Christ has made us. Oh, we do not look at the things that are seen. You know, I don't, I don't fix my eyes on the present reality. No, 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 that's not why I'm doing church. I want you to know the truth because the truth always gets you to live free. Gets you to live free. You see, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, give it for me, please. The word possession means that you are either possessed by a spirit that occupies your spirit, your soul, and your body. Now, is it possible for a demon and God to coexist? That's how you have to think about this thing. What communion has light with darkness? That's the reality. It's not possible. Yes, a Christian can be afflicted and oppressed, but you can never be possessed. And affliction can be done and can be dealt with when you understand the truth. That's why I'm teaching you this. Did you get the picture? Say, I can never be possessed. You see, sometimes when, when God opened my eyes to see some demon, you know, I tell you these things are so easy. When you know who you are, when God opened my eyes to see, do you know how, if I, <laughs> you know that's how I cast out demons when I see them. Seriously, when God opens my eyes, I, I don't need to talk. I just, you are him. And they flee. I know I, I say the truth before man and God. Seriously. Sometimes God opens my eyes. My default approach is, are you being serious? If I nod you, you and, you and he. You get the picture. So, focus where the epistles. You see, as a matter of fact, if you become a professor in the book of Romans, you will be a solid Christian. Understand the book of Romans. Have you ever wondered why that's the first book they put next to the Acts of Apostles? That wasn't the first book that was written. But you see, that book, Romans, is the, is the, is the high point, the, the, the definition of God's revelation to us as Christians. You don't understand the book of Romans, you don't understand Christianity. So, you take Ephesians 1, 17 to 19, you pray and sit with Romans. I've said it to you times with that number. I still bought one book on the book of Romans last week. I probably have about 19 books on the book of Romans. You sit with the book of Romans, you study it, you would understand Christianity. That's where everything is written. Then you read the rest. But with your understanding of the book of Romans, you will understand the remaining epistles. I guarantee you. So leave the Old Testament for now. If you've been feasting on the Old Testament, leave it. You will see you, you will see us is pursuing you at night. Yeah. But when you sit with the epistles, even when you see the horses, there will be chariots of fire defending you. That's what you will see. Because you will get a clear picture of it in your mental, in your mental state. And you see chariots of fire all around you, fighting on your behalf, and you just be smiling. That's my God looking after me. That's how we do it. And then the next guide that you must understand is that in Bible study, context is king. What did I say? In Bible study, context is king. Of course, there are so many other guides, but these ones that I've showed you this morning, knowing the Old Testament, the New Testament, where it ends, where to place it, the tenses used in the epistles, and then follow the rule of context. You see, when the Bible was written, there were no chapters and verses. Thank God for those who put the chapters and verses, but it, to me, it's done more harm than good. They meant well, but it's done a lot of harm to us in church because we're so good at just lifting a verse. We just pick it. 
you, you know the sons of Eli, when they go and pick the, the, the meat while it's still on, the, they put their pruning hooks and then you, you just pick the scripture and pick it out. And then, you know, the, the, the old verse loses its entire meaning, okay? And we interpret it so wrongly, so wrongly. When Paul, when those guys were wrote, there were no chapters, there were no, can I even say, there were no capital letters in the Greek text. So the idea of when you see S is talking about the Holy Spirit, you see small S is talking about another spirit. You know, technically it may not be really true. Context will help you. Okay, so let's look at an example. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Let's look at an example and then we'll, we'll pick up from there. Philippians chapter 4. Are you following me this morning? Yes, yeah, please make sure you practice. Take your study using this guide. It will save you a lot of heartache. Trust me, it will save you. It will guide you to knowing the truth. Nothing is better than the truth, isn't it? Oh, nothing is better than the truth. So, for example, when, when that spirit of condemnation comes inside you, when, when you do something wrong, it's okay to acknowledge that you're wrong. Yeah? And to move on, knowing that you have been washed by the blood. But when the devil comes with the condemnation, you know that there is therefore now no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and what? And the law of death. You, you must know these things. Or you need to sit with the epistles. Sit with it. No, I don't, I don't work in condemnation. No, 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 no. I may do something wrong, but I'm blood washed. You see, I'm holy. You see, I'm sanctified. Clean by the blood of Jesus. That's who Christ has made me. That's who Christ has made me. Philippians chapter 4, please. Let's, let's, let's look at an example of context. Context. Okay, so this scripture says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, you pick this verse, you can read it to me, I can fly a plane. It's just that the plane will crash. Yeah? But you can pick it to me, okay, if I go and run with, with a boat, I will, I, will, I, will, I will beat him because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, you can pick it out of context and make it to say whatever the scripture was not even saying. So what does context do? It would help you to understand what this verse of scripture actually means. Context is what? King. In Bible interpretation, context is king. What does context mean? Read the verses before, read the verses after, so that you can understand what the verse is saying. So let's go to verse 10. Let's read up a little bit. Let's read up a little bit. My favorite one is Romans. I, I, I love Romans. See, I love Romans. You just have to love Romans if you want to grow as a Christian. You see, when Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Romans 1.16. From Romans 1.16 to the end of chapter 8, that was what statement that Paul was explaining. So when you're reading Romans, you know that from Romans 1.16, the answer to Romans 1.16 ended in chapter 8. So you follow the, the, the trend of thought. Don't stay out of it. He says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. What Paul was explaining started from verse 17. For in the gospel is salvation. And he began explaining how men became guilty. The Jews became guilty in chapter 3. Chapter 4, Gentiles became guilty. Chapter 5, therefore, now being justified, says to us that because of Jesus, we are now justified. And began explaining the benefit of the gospel. And then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. How shall we, who died to sin? He, say, he said we died. Our spirit man died to sin. Study in context, you will understand it. Okay? All right, let's go back to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11. Or verse 10. Quickly, because of time. Verse 10, please. All right. It says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. Read with me. It says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care of me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. So Paul was talking about what here? They're looking after him, right? All right. Verse 11. It says, not that I speak in regard to need, 
For I have learned in whatever state I am to be what? To be content. Are you following the line of thought? Look at verse 13, verse 12. He says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and what? And to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. He said, look at verse 13. I can do all things. So what was Paul explaining? What was Paul writing about in this verse? Context. What? Contentment. What was he writing about? Contentment. That in whatever situation I find myself, I can do all things. If I have money, I will be fine. If I don't have money, I will be fine. In whatever state I am, I can do all things through who? Through Christ. Who? Do you understand the picture? Yeah. You, you see what context we do for you. So you won't be saying that you can fly a plane because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No, you can't do all things. It's not, it's not like that. But you see, when you go through life and you're faced with some difficult situations, like Paul was going through his own hardship, okay? He had a, he had a tough time. Paul had it really rough. In fact, the day he got born again, God told him, I will show you the things that you will suffer for my name. Did he suffer? Yes, he did. She prayed many times, beating to die. And he was imprisoned and eventually his head was cut off. He suffered for God. But he was saying that despite all this, I know I can do all things through Christ because God's grace is always there for him. Do you see the picture? Context will save you from wrong interpretation of the Bible. Read it in context. So with that in mind, with that in mind, in studying the Bible, there is something that the truth of God's word does to you. Something that truth does to you. Truth sets you free. Truth gives you liberty and boldness. Truth gives you the right and privileges knowing that you are a child of God. You live in the truth and in the reality of the truth. And so you know that when Jesus shows up, you are going to heaven. You won't go to bed sleeping like, oh, when Jesus comes, God, please take me home. No. Because the truth truly sets free. Second Peter, please. Second Peter chapter 1. So let's look at what the truth does to us. I'm getting to where the integrity of God's word lies now. See, there is something the truth does in you. Oh, the truth is the truth. Paul tells us you can't do anything but for the truth. You can't, you can't, you can't do anything against the truth. I pray the Lord will open your eyes to see the truth. Amen. See the truth and know the truth. See why we always pray that prayer in Ephesians. That the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. That we may know. The Old New Testament is all about what you know. It gave us the spirit of truth. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. So that we can know the things that have been freely given to us. It's about knowing what you know. That's how we thrive in the New Testament. Even when you pray, knowledge will guide how you pray. You won't waste your time binding any demon because they are already bound. You won't be praying against your enemy. I remember several years ago, a sister of mine was telling me, oh, you know, uh, pray that I let the ground open up and swallow your enemies. I said, God doesn't answer that kind of prayer. He said, she said, what do you mean? I said, yes, I said what I said. God does not answer that kind of prayer. He doesn't. He says, pray for your enemies. Love those who despitefully use you. That's what the scripture says. It says, love your enemies. Isn't that what the scripture says? Say, love your enemies. By the way, you're not supposed to have any enemy anyway. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 to 5. Are you following me this morning? The importance of knowledge. Say, I have been set free. I am, I am delivered, totally delivered, and I walk in the reality of this freedom of, of what Christ has done for me. Yes, that's, that's, that's who we are. That's who we are. 
So look at this. Look at this. See, I, I, I've, I've, I've said all that to get us to this point, to get us to see the importance of knowledge. You see why we don't pray some prayer points in this, in this church? Because we know the truth. We know the truth, and we walk in the reality of the truth. Yeah. It's, see, it's, 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 it's impossible for me to, to, to pray or teach you certain things because I'll be deceiving you. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. I, I would rather not pastor and, than teach otherwise. Seriously. I would rather not be a pastor than teach you otherwise. No, I won't, I won't, I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. We know the truth, and the truth always, always sets free. So look at Second Peter chapter 1. Let's, let's get this now. It's getting serious, more serious now. More serious. It says grace and peace. Read with me. Be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Okay? As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Brothers, give me the previous verse. Give me the previous verse too. Now let's start from there. It says grace and peace be what? Be multiplied to you. Now, uh, we know from scripture, you know, grace, the grace of God is Jesus Christ, okay? But part of the benefits of what, benefit of what Christ has done for us is to give us grace to function. And so grace in this verse, I'll define it as an empowerment or an endowment or an, an, an anointing or power to do what God has called you to do. It says grace, that grace and the peace of God can be multiplied to you. How? In the knowledge so, you want grace, you want peace, the way to get it is through the knowledge of God and Jesus, our Lord. You want grace, you want peace, the way to get it is out, through the knowledge. True knowledge of who? Not just any kind of knowledge, the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. Where do I get it from? From the Bible. The knowledge is in the Bible. So how can I get the knowledge? The knowledge I'm talking about this morning is what the, the Greek word calls epignosis. So we know from, from, from the Bible that the word love you know, in the Greek word, there's variations of love in the Greek language, isn't it? Yeah? What, what do we have? Agape. What do we have? Philo. What do we have? Eros. And what again? I think there's four, four of them. So what I have for everyone is agape, right? Ag I love you all with the agape love of God. <laughs> agape. I, I, believe me, I love you. Seriously, I love your pa. Agape. <laughs> Agape love of God. But my wife, ah, there's, there's more Sunday morning creation. I love my wife in a different way, okay? In, in a different way, multiple layers of love, yeah? Multidimensional love, yeah? You, you know that, don't you? You, you know that. She's blushing. <laughs> okay, I love my wife. Don't, don't worry. Even if you don't believe it, I love my wife. And she knows, right? Okay. And then there's the other one that people refer to as lost. May you not lost after every woman in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So also, when it comes to knowledge, there are a few words interpreted knowledge in the, in the Greek lexicon. There is gnosko, there is gnosis, but there's a particular one, epignosis, which is what Peter is referring to here. Epignosis means the perfect understanding of, of God's word. There is an imperfect understanding of God's word. There is an imperfect understanding of God's word. The revealed truth, coming to know the fullness of God's word, that comes by revelation. Let's, let's, let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Acts, please. Book of Acts, chapter 18, in verse 24 to 26. You see, you can be in church for years 
are not truly understand the truth. There's a pastor in Nigeria. I, I can mention his name. He said it himself, so it's not me. He said it himself. Bishop Michael Konko. I don't know if you, if you know him. Bishop Michael Konko. You know. He's been a pastor, maybe the, probably, he's been a Christian probably before I was born and pastored for almost 40 years. He said in his own statement that, you know, he understood the gospel when he was about 70 years old. Seriously. And he's been pastoring for years. Not because he, 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 he meant to deceive people, but he never came in contact with the revelation. Go, go, he's on, he's on YouTube. Listen to him. Listen to him. He's on YouTube. He said it himself. I'm, I'm, I'm quoting him verbatim. It's not because what he's been teaching all along, he wanted to, to, to not teach people the truth, but he taught as far as he understood. Okay? But the revelation of the truth came to him, he said, when he was about 70 years old. So you, you can even be a pastor and not understand. No, no, I'm, I'm not, this is not even a joking matter, okay? And not, you, we, 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 don't, we don't laugh at people because they don't know the truth. We rather pray for people that they will come to the knowledge of the truth. So it's, it's my daily prayer. See, ask my wife. It's my daily prayer point that God will give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him so that the highs of my understanding will be enlightened so that I can know so that you can know it's in the knowing. You want to really know the truth so that you don't walk in darkness. You see, you can be in church and still be walking in darkness, but you don't want to be in darkness. He that follows Jesus, follow the word, you will not walk in darkness because you will walk in the light as he is in the light. This light comes by revelation knowledge. Comes by revelation knowledge. And God is no respecter of anybody. I've told you this story so many times. How I came across that prayer points in a book written by Kenneth Hagin probably over 20 years ago. And he said, he, he, he prayed and one day he began to understand the Bible. It was as if someone took a veil from his mind. Kenneth Hagin is probably one of the best teachers of God's word, even in death. See? That result came out of Ephesians 1, 17, 19, and I chose to follow him, and I prayed, and one day, light came, light came. You see, when the light comes, you will know. When the light dawns on your spirit, you will know. Light came, and I began to see. The, the, the mysteries of the truth that has been hidden. You see, it says it has not been revealed to us. It's no longer hidden. It has been revealed by the Spirit of God. See, the truth. See, it will save you. You, you. you won't be consulting mediums. You won't be consulting prophets who don't even understand the truth. You will sit down. When there are crises, you will sit down and pray. Because the Lord is your helper. He has said so that we can boldly say that the Lord is my helper. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let my foot to be moved. That is the God we serve. You will know the truth. It's in the truth that there is life. It's in the truth that there is life. Oh, man, you see, the truth sets free. The truth gives liberty. The truth gives freedom. When you come in contact with the truth, you will live freely. You will live freely. You will live. How are you feeling this thing this morning? Yeah. And so look at Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, in verse 24 to 26. You will be so influenced by the truth. That even if you want to do something outside of the scripture, the spirit will be guiding you and be telling you, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Because you know that it is not part of your nature. No, you, ca you can't. You can't. You can't. You see, you see, uh, I said to my wife, you know, I, I'm not sure the discussion, I think we're having a discussion about, 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 uh, about people messing about. And I said to her, see, look, my primary reason for not messing about. It's not you. 
My primary reason is that I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. I carry God on my inside. So, with that understanding and that consciousness, I know that this temple is not for messing about. It's for God. And I honor God in my body. I glorify God in my body, which are God's. Then on that basis, I have respect and regard for my wife. Do you get the picture? That's how it flows. You see? It's God first. God first. And so with that understanding, knowing that I am God's temple, in me dwells God. And so I move about knowing that I have God on my inside. And so with that understanding, I walk and move because in him I have my being. You see, I have my being in him. You see, he walks in me both to do and to will of his good pleasure. That is God. Acts chapter 18. I keep moving away from Acts chapter 18. You see, this, this thing has a way of intoxicating you. It, 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 it intoxicates. The truth intoxicates. It intoxicates. Acts chapter 18. Look at this man. It says, now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, he says he was an eloquent man. And what mighty in scripture. Look at the description. He was an eloquent man. He was mighty in scripture. He came to Ephesus. But look at him. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord. He was fervent in spirit. He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Though he knew only the baptism of John. This guy was fervent. He was fervent. He was faithful. He knew only what he had been taught, and he held on to it, and he taught it accurately. Look at the but. Only the baptism of John, water baptism. That was all he knew. Water baptism. You see, and you can be like that and live like that, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. You can be like that, but that will not be your portion. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is at work in you. You know the truth. The truth and the truth always in the name of Jesus. Then look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. But God sent someone to him. May God send you Aquila and Priscilla. You see, when you find such people, you follow them. He says, so he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and expounded to him the way of God more accurately. They probably taught him the baptism of the Spirit, which is superior than water baptism. Water baptism was a shadow. The reality or the substance is Christ, the Spirit that dwells within us. Do you get the picture? So don't be like Apollos. Be like Aquila who knew the truth and they were willing to share the truth with him and they saved him, okay? You know, he, 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 from that moment on, he would have stopped the ministry of water baptism. Yeah? You see? See, see, see and these things are, honestly, these, these, these things, no, no, Mobi, don't laugh. These things are true. These things are true, okay? These things, these things happen, okay? People can be in the church and the blindfolding weapon of the enemy is at work on their mind. But you see, you are free. Say, I'm free from every veil of the devil. You are free. The truth comes to you. The truth. Come in contact with the truth at all times. And it comes in the place of prayer. It comes in the place of prayer. It comes in the place of prayer. If you follow the, the book of Acts, you know there was a time the apostles were even arguing over circumcision. Yeah. yeah? The Jews wanted the Gentiles to be circumcised before they could be recognized as Christians. But in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails nothing but only faith in Christ Jesus. There is no need for circumcision. Only faith in Christ Jesus. Genesis chapter 17, please. No, let's read Romans chapter 4 because of time. Romans chapter 4. Let's get into this. The integrity of God's word. As God said it, he will do it. But you see, this knowledge of knowing that whatever God says to you must come to pass comes from knowing the truth. 
And so if we start from the story of Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, we'll continue from here next week, God called him out of his country, just like many of us left Nigeria, in search of good pasture, you know, to be free from oppression and um, depression, <laughs> to be free, you know. So he left, and God gave him a word. Let's, let's, let's actually go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Let's, let's do five more minutes and, and we'll wrap up. Genesis chapter 12. Are you, are you loving this this morning? Yeah. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. And let's read from verse 1. Okay. Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house. Remember, whoever loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. This was what Abraham was about to experience. Leave your father. Leave your mother. Leave the country you've always known to a land that I will show you. A land that you have no clue about. For he looked for a city, see, whose builder and maker is God. He didn't know where he was going. He says, go to a land that I will show you. But look at the next verse. Abraham obeyed. I will teach a series on the blessings of obedience at some point. But look at the promises. He says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be what? A blessing. Verse 3. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. But look at the next verse. What did he do? So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. He didn't even know where he was going. But he trusted him that called him and said to him, depart from this place and go. And he left by the word of the Lord, knowing that God that spoke to him is able also to bring to pass what he has said. He said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. And anyone who blesses you shall be blessed. Anyone who curses you will be cursed. He says, and in you all the nations of the heart shall be blessed. Today, everyone is blessed in Abraham. Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Romans chapter 4, that's the beginning of the story. But let me wrap up with this, Romans chapter 4. We'll go back to the story of Abraham next week. Romans chapter 4. Uh, you, you can tell that I love the book of Romans. I, I love it. Maybe I'm from Rome. Somebody, <laughs> somebody didn't take me when he was going to Rome. I forgive you. Every sin. Okay, so let's do the cross. <laughs> Praise God. So let's, 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 let's look at the book of Rome. Romans chapter 4. <laughs> Did I say book of Rome? Yeah, Romans chapter 4. Babe, I think I'm due for a Rome holiday. Yeah, Romans chapter 4. Let's do charity contribution. Yeah. Yeah, are you going to do GoFundMe? Can I open a GoFundMe page for my trip to, to where? I uh, know. I, I, I prefer other places. I've not been to Bahamas. Yeah. <laughs> or Qatar. All the development that's happened with the, for the World Cup. You know. A nice trip. Oh, yeah, babe, please open my GoFundMe page. <laughs> Romans chapter 4. See, the problem is when you drink too much coke on Saturday, you have to come to church and misbehave sometimes. <laughs> so this, this, this comedian aspect of me is coke and sugar. Praise God. All right, Romans chapter 4. Uh, Romans chapter 4. As I was missing last week, and I said, oh, my, the cost of repairing my car will buy some designer shoes and some principalities and powers acting. And so, Pastor, how much is your most expensive shoe? I said, I, I, that was a joke now. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah. All right. Romans chapter 4. Uh, Romans chapter 4. Let's wrap up. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Verse 16, please. Verse 16. You know. Verse 16. So let's read so we can get so we can get the context. Yeah? Romans chapter 4. It says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. So not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Okay, next verse, verse 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. It says, as it is written, 
I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. See, if, please leave the scripture. Say, it says, as it is written. Maybe I would have preferred it's, it's written this way, as it, as it was spoken. It was God who spoke, isn't it? And written to us or written for us. So God spoke and said, I have made you a father of many nations. At this time, there was no child. Abraham was over 90 years old. As a matter of fact, when God told him he would have a son, he laughed. Uh, God, uh, uh, leave, leave, leave story for, for Matthias. Yeah, uh, uh, we are not joking here now, God. Uh, uh, me, me, uh, 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 hundred, almost hundred. Sarah, Abba, uh, uh, <laughs> Sarah, agreed the, a man can still, you know, shoot at certain age, but Sarah, Abba now, come on. God, why? Well, let's not joke here. They both laughed, isn't it? But God looks and said, looked and said, look, I have said it, you shall come to pass. Because I said it, not because of anybody. You see, Hebrew tells us because he could not swear by anybody that is greater than him. He looked around, he swore by himself. He said, by myself, have I sworn? That's the God we serve. There is no other person. There was no other person. He says that by, by two immutable things in which it's impossible for God to lie, he spoke it into existence. He calls those things that are dead as though they exist. They were both dead. But because the word of the Lord went out, it will not return to him void. It shall accomplish that which it has been sent to accomplish. Therein lies the integrity of of God's word. Once he spoke it, it has to come to pass. You see it this morning. You see, when God speaks a promise to you, irrespective of what happens in the world, they are noise. Ignore it. Once God says it, it must come to pass. Once he speaks it, it has to come to pass. That is the God that we serve. Yeah, that's the God we serve. Rise with me. Let's pray because of time. We'll pick up next week. Once God says it, it's bound to come to pass. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. God said it, and I believe it, and that settles it. When he says it, God said it, and what do I do? I believe it, and what happens? That settles it. And when God says it, God, God said it. it. And what do I do? I, I believe it. it. And what happens? That settles it. it. You see, if you're here this morning, God is asking me to tell you. you heard this morning. Ignore the doctor's report. Ignore the doctor's report. Mangre se fre te kika yani kasuzu to fre. You see, God said it. I speak it over you this morning. Whatever God says to you, it comes to pass. Whatever God says to you, it comes to pass. Ignore the noise of the doctors. It is just noise. We do not look at the things that are seen. We do not look at what they say. We do not look at what they say. We don't listen to what they say. We listen to what the word says. God says it, and I believe it, and that settles it. It's Settles it. Mangra de susto frete kika yani kasekete. Mariga de seke yeke seke teki ya. Ingra do so frete. Mariga de desecrete kika ya. Indo so frete kika ya. Ingra de zesto frete ki. Open your mouth this morning and pray. Mangra de ko so so frete. Exercise yourself. Speak it forth. Speak it forth. Speak it forth. By the word of the Lord, he comes to pass in the name of Jesus. Mangre teki yane kazukata zuzu ze frete ki zumalandre seke teki ya reke zusto frete ki kaya mangre de seke te mangro so so frete rete rete ki zuzo fra ki kaya zo pre ki 
Zekrete, Higa to so so frete, Maliga do so crete, Kiye, Ende bo chakra te, Kiyane ke sekete, Reketo so 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 frete. Oh yes, Lord. Leka to shanta ke kaya. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all things are gone. Because I know. seats have you been blessed today okay um i thank god for the word you know i was looking at the word integrity and it just re- something you can rely on so thank god for the word and the fact that we can rely on it um i also want to appreciate our uh, church leaders as well as i was sitting in the chair what came to my spirit was the leadership of this church one thing they have is patience and grace and I just felt the need to share it, that they are blessed with that. And let us enjoy the grace and patience that that comes with. Um, so before I go into the announcement proper, we will go straight to take our offerings. So please, um, the offerings are going to be going around. There's going to be some music played. Give generously. Smile. Let us see your teeth. Be happy. Huh? Can we have some music, please? Sing far above all, and your heart beats with hearts calling. That calling to the power. What he said he will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able.
Coming worried, I was like, "We're about to close service. Let's let's keep it disciplined, please, please." You people know you're asking for trouble. Just keep it disciplined. Stay within time. Um, before I just run through the announcements, I've been told to remind everyone there's tea and coffee at the back um, for those who would like some after the service. So please, can we have the slideshow, please? Uh, announcements are as follows. Um, Sundays, like you are part of today's church, physically and also via Zoom at 10 a.m. every week. Don't miss the next service. You know how wonderful the word has been today. It, it's a series. Continue. Please make sure you attend. Bible study on Wednesdays, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Please be a part of it. We have our recharge, refresh, and refire Monday to Friday, APOP, 6 to 7 a.m., Please be a part of it. Also, ladies, rise to pray. First Saturday of every month, 7 to 8 a.m. via Zoom. Please, ladies in the house, be a part of it. I'm, in, I'm actually in step with the slide today. <laughs> Worship and prayer feast. Second Friday of every month, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. via Zoom. Please be a part of it. Let us pray together. And our night of intercession, every Monday, 9 p.m. via Zoom. Please be a part of this. Prayer is not just for a select few. <laughs> okay. Um, and we have our children and their various groups. I, I want to, I don't know if we can celebrate the church. We are encouraging our children to pray, <laughs> our teens to pray. Please let us engage our children with what is going on. First timers, do we have any first timers in the house? You see how we do it here. You see how we do it here. Sister, welcome. Please, can you make her feel welcome? Oh, we have two. Oh, sisters, welcome, welcome. Welcome. You're welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God. This is Petra House Andover. It is so good to have you here. See all the hugs, the handshakes. When we are finished with you, you go home and you'll be wondering, why am I feeling like someone is still hugging and shaking me? You're welcome, sisters. Thank you so much for joining us. We pray you be a part of us. Um, envelopes are going around. If you want um, further information, please just indicate and we will share our faith and our life with you. Amen. I'm not going to waste time and give you my own personal testimony from this church, so receive it. Amen. Um, we also have the need for prayer, so for those of us who need prayer, please fill the blue forms. And importantly, please make your time available, your talents, your gifts. Fill the yellow envelope and make yourself useful in the house of the Lord. Amen. And finally, on socials, please remember to like, subscribe, share, interact, engage with our socials. The more you do it, people who are your friends will see what you are doing. And before you know it, you'll be sharing the message of what we are about. Also, subscribe to your YouTube channel. Don't just read. When you are in, you're on uh, Zoom or whatever via YouTube channel, comment. Simple hallelujah. You can spread it, uh, type it, and send. And the Lord will bless you as you do that. Amen. So can we rise to our feet? It's been wonderful fellowshipping with you all today. Thank you. Please just give me a minute. Just, sorry, please. Um, we are looking to adjust our service a little bit slightly, please, okay? Um, the Sunday school team, they are harassing me, okay? They are harassing me, and I want to be set free from the harassment. Praise God. Okay, that's a joke. Okay, so we're, we're going to be starting our Sunday school um, from first Sunday in February, slightly earlier, okay? The goal is to probably start like maybe 10 or 15 minutes before 10, but let's take it bit by bit. 
So from first Sunday of February, we'll be starting at 9.55 um, um, from first Sunday of February. Okay, is that okay? So we, we, we try out five minutes and see how the, how we, the flow. Now, we try to start the service, the streaming at 10.30 because it's easier to start services at blocks of time. Yeah. If you say we should start streaming at 10.40, it won't, it won't really work well. You either start on the hour or half the hour, okay? So we're going to shift it backwards a bit. And if you've not been coming to Sunday school, if you want to go to heaven, you come to Sunday school. <laughs> All right, that's a joke. Let's rise on our feet. Hebrews chapter 13, please. Let's, let's, let's close the service. Okay, and also the children's church, please. We're looking for more teachers. We, we're, we're working out a few things for the children's church. We're hoping that, you know, implement a new structure and it will get better. And most importantly, God is going to give us a bigger place. Yeah. You know, he's going to give us a bigger place. We need a bigger place, you know. And we're praying and we're trusting to, to guide us to that place. All right, let's read the confession as a close. It says, Now, may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, working in me what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Have a great week. God bless you.